Good morning, YouTube family. Good afternoon and good evening, wherever you might be. Today must be a lawn mowing day because sounds like three of my neighbors are out there mowing their lawns at the same time. What the heck, people? But anyway, let me see if I can get my phone on Do Not Disturb. There we go. All right, now I am ready. Oh boy, good, oh, hold on. Good morning, John, good to see you here. Uh, Ovi, you're back, hey, how are you doing? Good to see you as well. We have quite the topic today, but hopefully, I, I hear a little weed whacking going on out there. Hopefully uh, we won't be interrupted by any more lawn mowing. It's a little late getting started because right when I was about to start the lawn mower not quite right next door to me, but close by, started up. There was no way you were going to hear me. Ah, uh, all right. Hey, I left my coffee inside. I'm going to go grab that really quickly. Oh my goodness. Thanks for hanging in there, you guys. So glad you guys are hopping on. Aw. Obi says, just trying to stay alive is how I'm doing. Yes. We have all been there. There are days where I feel the same, Obi. You and me both. But today we're going to talk about what if you had stayed with a narcissist, what would that look like right now? And the reason for that is because, um, you know, I've been talking to s different people who still have narcissists in their life and what their life looks like right now. Total chaos, but we'll get into that and what some of the, those details are because you probably could identify. Also, for those who don't have the narcissist in their life and are missing the narcissist, this will be a really good awakening for you. This will help you come to your senses and not miss them anymore. But also there was a uh, viewer who was uh, commenting back and forth with me about the narcissist they miss and their cutoff has been, or discard or whatever you might wanna call it, has been very recent. So they are in a world of hurt. Um, it's a guy, I think, he, yeah, he, he's in a world of hurt right now and a lot of us can understand that Freshly coming out of a relationship, even if it's a short relationship, because narcissists move quickly and deeply. We bond very deeply with them in a very quick fashion. I mean, even if it's somebody that you've known for a long time, because that's happened too, or you've been kind of peripheral friends for a long time, never anything romantic, and then when you do get into a romantic relationship with them, it goes deeply very quickly and then before you realize it it's over the ride is done and you're still left lingering figure, trying to figure out what what has gone on why are you missing them so much and how are you going to get back on your feet how are you going to live again right you just feel like your heart's been torn out but let's talk about what if you had stayed with them that's the other side of that coin right Oh my goodness, you guys. I hope you're not hearing all this weed whacking going on, but the neighbors are going insane today. I don't know. It's getting kind of loud on my part, <laughs> on my end here, where I can hear it, but hopefully the phone is uh, blocking out some of that for you guys. Um, tree barking dog, good to see you, says, I feel you. I kind of am Gloria Gainering it. I will survive. Oh, yes. Got to laugh. Oh, my gosh. I heard that song last night at a concert. Hilarious that you mentioned that song. It's such a good song, though, isn't it? We will survive. It's so inspiring. You walk out of these relationships and you think you can't survive, right? You feel like you don't even want to really survive without them. And you just want to go back to the way things were or try to rekindle or relive the highlights of your relationship. But what I really want to talk about is 
let's let's be real. What what would it really look like if you had stayed, right? What would it look like if you were still together today? And I want to have a little real talk today about that. Yes, tree barking dog. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it would look like in a nutshell. Um, rhymes with shell, you guys. So what if you stayed with the narcissist? The first thing that came to my mind about that was the gaslighting. The gaslighting alone would drive you absolutely insane. All right, you guys, I think there are like dueling weed whackers going on over here now. What the heck? Can you hear that? Oh, I see. They got a, they got a leaf blower, weed whacker, and a lawnmower going. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, love these neighbors. They're really awesome people, but holy moly. Yeah, they, they've got it together, man. That's the way to do it if you're going to mow your lawn. Oh, I think they're done. <laughs> they're done oh. oh man yeah yeah Obi yep so the gaslighting what you have to remember what that was like when you were with the narcissist it they, they lie continually and you never know what's the truth right you never know when something's really happening or when um, not, you know, there are times they tell the truth, but you, you just can't even tell when it is. And when they're fooling you, when they're lying to you, when they're deceiving you, you want so badly to believe it, right? Even if it's something so stupid as, did you pick up the laundry, right? Did you pick up the dry cleaning? Did you get the mail? Did you send out the bill? Did you pay the, the whatever, right? The utility bill. Did you, um, did you call this person back? they'll lie about that and you're just left like you know trusting it and, and you go along and then suddenly part of your world starts to fall apart maybe uh you get a final notice from the utility company or um, the person you were supposed to pick up calls and is angry with you and saying why the heck did you stand me up and you're thinking i sent the narcissist to go get you and he said he did or she said she would and or you know you go to your closet to, expecting you'll have the suit for that important meeting today, but uh, it's not there, right? Because they didn't pick up the dry cleaning. I mean, it seems so simple and so small and insignificant, but it's tons of gaslighting like that. It's just one upon another. And until you just feel like you're falling apart, until you don't know what to say to get the narcissist to tell you the truth, that's what it would be like every day of your life if the narcissist were still in your life right now. We forget about these times when we're, we're pining for them, when we're missing them, when we're missing the incredible passion, right? The, the exciting moments when we were on vacation with them or when we were out having, you know, going dancing or having a good time with friends and they were there with us. We'll, we'll remember those times. But we'll forget those pretty much 95% of the other time when, when they're gaslighting us, when they're driving us up the wall because our world starts to unravel and fall apart all around the edges. And we're trying to figure out what's going on. We're, we're just trying to hold things together. So gaslighting, you guys, would drive just that alone would be driving you insane. I mean, there are times where you could, could say, okay, they forgot the, the, um, the dry cleaning. So you go get it and you, you didn't get to wear your blouse or suit or whatever it is you wanted to wear. You, you know, they forgot to pick up somebody and they, they got mad at you because you were in charge of getting them picked up. And well, you smoothed that over, you fixed that, right? But it just continues to add up day after day until you just go completely crazy because a day will come or a time will come when you absolutely need something done and not that it might be a life and death situation but close to it right so important so incredibly important you need to make some phone calls because of a deal or you, you need something picked up because you need it for a presentation and you absolutely need this thing but you feel like I cannot trust this narcissist to help you can't 
So you have to go solo and you feel like, what the heck? We're supposed to be partners. We're, so, you know, it'll start flooding in. The gaslighting would tear you alone, would tear you apart. Now, other things would be happening right now as well in your life if the narcissist were still in it. One of those things is you'd still be in an, on this emotional roller coaster. It never ends. It never ends. You're not going to be able to say, oh, well, you know, they've enjoyed. Um, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm watching this pigeon flying around. It's pretty, not kind of neat. It's pretty, actually. Kind of a whitish pigeon. So, sorry. <laughs> so, I was talking about this emotional roller coaster you're going to be on with the narcissist. You're, you're not getting off that ride. If, if you're still with the narcissist, you might think, okay, things are going to get better, right? Eventually, things have got to get better. They're going to calm down. They're going to get tired. They're going to get older. They're going to stop bickering with you. They're going to stop going up and down, flipping out at the smallest things. The, you know, you talk through so many times all these different things, and, and they're not going to flip out anymore. But that's not what happens. You never know when something's going to trigger them. You just don't. So not only are you on this roller coaster, emotional roller coaster, you also are walking on eggshells because you don't want to trigger them, right? You don't want to say something. You don't want to remind them of something. And here's the deal. There's no way you can win. There's absolutely no way you can win at this game. You are going to step on a landmine. You are going to crack those eggs no matter what you try because you don't know what's going on in their head. You don't know what they experienced that day. You don't know what they've been watching or listening to. And they're already on edge, right? Even though they initially try to pretend they're not on edge and they're loose and easy and having a nice evening with you. And then suddenly they flip out. Holy cow, let me tell you a story about one time we went out to dinner with my husband and his family. Um, and there's, you know, oh my gosh. So we go out and uh, <laughs> a person in his family, okay, I'm not going to name names, sitting there. We're all having such a pleasant time. We're having a great dinner, like, you know, nice meal, food is good. We're actually getting along. Everybody's having good conversation, right? And suddenly, you know, and then my, my, I can't remember, this is quite a few years ago. He, he brings up something about um, the safest place to walk in the road, um, or, or maybe not even that. He was talking about, you know, sometimes we will see people walking down the middle of the road, you know, not a really super busy road, but just in the middle of the road. And maybe it's like, you know, one of these quiet country ro roads, and we're just kind of surprised. Why, why are they in the middle of the road? How, how weird, right? Um, and we, we, I think he said something like, well, I don't know, maybe they felt like that was the safest place to be, you know, because someone will actually see them or I, I'm not sure what he said, or he might've said it's the most dangerous place to be. I can't even remember which, which one he said. Well, she flipped out, like totally flipped out in the middle of the restaurant, in the middle of having this pleasant family meal. We just can't control this. We cannot control the narcissist. She starts yelling at him in the restaurant. Like, I'm looking around at the other tables. They're all looking at us because she starts yelling at him. That's not true. I know that's not true. And she says something about, you know, I know someone who did that. And, and I can't remember what, you know, this is how stupid it was. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's the safest place in the road or not the safest place in the road. That is opinion, okay? Some people might feel like I, I want to make sure to be seen. I'm not talking about middle of a lane. I'm talking about on the, on the double yellow line, okay, you guys? And they think that if they're on the side of road where there's no edge or whatever, people may, I, I'm not, they may fall into a ditch. I don't know what the deal was. So she's yelling at him about opinion. Opinion. What the heck? And this is about not even any about anybody we know personally. It's just some news story or some little editorial we were reading <laughs> in a newspaper. And he brought it up thinking uh, that this is a pretty safe topic, right? We're not talking about religion or politics. We're not talking about family 
uh, history or who did what to whom. He just talked about walking down, you know, read an, an article about walking down the middle of the road and why some people do that. This is what I'm talking about. You're always on an emotional roller coaster with a narcissist. They don't get off. And you're sitting there, or you know, wondering, what, what did I say? And here he is. He starts to backpedal, right? Tries to backpedal, trying to tell her, um, you know, no one's arguing with her. No one wants to argue with her. We don't want this to continue. We're all, we've all backed off. You know, we're just done. And I cannot even remember if I said something, but I know I wanted to say something. Like, what the heck? You know, this really doesn't matter. Why are you getting so freaking upset? And I think one of the family members did say that, like, why are you so upset about this? Well, she let him have it too. <laughs> she starts yelling about how this affects her personally. We're like, what the heck? Why would it affect you personally? You can decide what you want to do. You don't have to walk down the middle of the road. You don't have to walk that double yellow line. You can stay in your car. You can walk on the side of the road, whatever you want to do. She just flipped out on this other person. Needless to say, this went on for about five minutes. The whole restaurant's staring at us. The waiter, waitresses, they want to stay away from this table. <laughs> I don't blame them. And what an embarrassment, right? And when it ended, you know, when she finally, you know, so she was so pleased with herself. She gives this, you know, actual, as if a triumphant, aha. Uh -huh. So, you know, I got you know, I was right and you were wrong type of attitude. <laughs> and we're just sitting there looking at her like, okay, crazy nut job. <laughs> we're gonna just move on now. And here's the deal. The narcissist has no clue what everybody else around them actually thinks of them, right? And that's why they continue on these emotional roller coasters. They have no clue what other people think of them. They have no clue how other people see them. They actually think other people agree with them. They actually think that all their yelling and screaming or, you know, blasting people in front of, in, in crowds, in, in the public, they think that other people actually respect them and hear their uh, arguments and agree with them because no one challenges them, right? No one wants to, no one's that stupid, right? No one's that stupid to jump in there with the stupid narcissist who, who's lost their mind. That's what your life would be like if you were still with a narcissist. You would have no clue when they're going to lose it. You have, you can be out in the, you can be in the middle of church, right? And they will flip out. There's nothing, there's no place that is sacred to them. There's no place off limits to them and their emotional outbursts. They don't control it. They don't, I don't want to say they don't know how to control it, but they just don't control it. That is what your life would be like. Always on eggshells, always on these roller coaster rides, never knowing when it's going to strike. And even though you're trying your best to keep the conversation on simple subjects, subjects that you think, no way could this bother them. This has nothing to do with them. You, as far as you know, they have had no experience with it. And yet somehow they're going to make up some experience with it. Oh my gosh, same narcissist. I had the same kind of conversation another time where she flips out in a library. Okay, you guys, <laughs> there's no safe place with a narcissist and their emotional roller coaster. You're going to be yanked around constantly if you were still with the narcissist. Now, those of you who are just now joining in, the topic is what if you had stayed with the narcissist? What would life look like right now? And the whole reason I'm talking about this right now is because you want to make sure that you don't miss them. Like the times that you are fooling yourself into um, missing them and, and just, you know, feeling like your life is empty without them and there's this hole in your, your heart. You want to be truthful with yourself. You want to, <laughs> you want to have the full disclosure of what they are like and that's what this show is about today what are they really like what are you really missing right you're thinking you're going to be missing those intimate moments when you actually got along for about 10 minutes right maybe you even got along for for an afternoon all right and possibly a few days but here's the thing 
you were walking on eggshells, whether you remember that or not. There are times that you get so conditioned to walking on eggshells that you don't even realize you're doing it. And here's the other part. Here's, here's point number three. It's going to affect your other relationships. You're going to be walking around shell-shocked. You're going to be walking around shell-shocked. You don't know this, but um, you know maybe some of you remember this or can recognize this. When you look back at your other relationships, you can see that while you were with the, re with the narcissist, you couldn't really be yourself. You couldn't let down your guard. You couldn't relax. You couldn't just take it easy and have fun and say whatever, whether it might offend someone or not, and most likely it wouldn't, but you were so uptight and, and shell-shocked that you were so careful all the time of what you were saying. You were so careful of what you were doing because you didn't want to spill something. You didn't want to make a mess. You didn't want to accidentally trip on a subject that will trigger the narcissist. Well, even when the narcissist wasn't around, you would tend to do that with your other relationships. You would tend to hold back. You would tend to not be yourself. You wouldn't relax. And the people around you noticed that. All that you know, you probably were wondering, why are my relationships so different with all my other friends? And it's because you've become conditioned to, to a certain behavior to keep you safe when you're with the narcissist. So you extend that behavior when you're with your real friends, with your real family. And they're wondering, why are you so distant? Why are you so unapproachable? Why aren't you, why do you seem like there's some kind of fake wall between them and you? And you don't notice it because you're just glad to be out of the house and away from the narcissist for a while, right? You think you're actually relaxed. You think that you're actually having a good time with your friends or your family and you're able to, to not guard your speech 100%. But your family kind of still notices. They notice that you're holding back a bit. They don't know why. They don't know what's changing inside of you. They don't know why you're not as um, funny or as relaxed and, and verbose as you used to be. Like pretty much saying anything, which would then of course crack them up, right? You, you kind of remember that too. You probably remember times when you used to be so witty and and people would just you know just out of the blue you'd say stuff because it just occurred to you and nobody was worried about being offended right nobody was worried because they all you got you guys all knew everybody there everybody was comfortable with each other you all gave each other the benefit of the doubt right and knew that you were just being silly you can't be that way with a narcissist and because you can't be that way with the narcissist, you can't be that way when you're away from the narcissist either. Because you have to condition yourself to always be on guard. So that will affect your other relationships. If you were still with a narcissist, you would not be able to heal these relationships now. You wouldn't be able to be honest and be frank or be open and just be yourself. You know, be your blundering, offensive, <laughs> silly, crazy self, but not really offensive. You know what I mean? Like when I'm with my friends or even with my family, we say stuff that is hilarious and we crack each other up. But our society has gotten to the point now where I kind of feel like we're all a bit shell shocked, where we all have to continually watch what we say around everyone, even people that we know we should be safe with, right? Even with our spouse or with our best friend, even with our siblings, we're feeling like we can't just say whatever and they understand that it doesn't come from this negative, horrible, dark, racist or, you know, misogynist or crazy part or bigoted, you know, of you. It, it, it's just you making fun of everything and, and thinking everything around you is hilarious. Back when comedy was funny, comedians could say all kinds of things. Now, things definitely would make certain people uncomfortable. I've been, I've been in um, or attended comedy shows where the comedians, yeah, you know, when they get into racial stuff and when they get to my race, 
I was a little uncomfortable, right? I was like, what? What the heck? You know, but a lot of people were laughing and, you know, they just saw it. It was a stereotype, okay? It was a stereotype. And it's up to you to decide whether you are a stereotype or you're not, right? Um, it's up to you to take offense or not take offense. I was uncomfortable. I don't know that I took offense. I kind of felt like, ooh, yeah, yeah, I didn't like that joke. I thought it was poor, you know, not just poor taste. It was really crude. It was What he was saying was really nasty and crude sexually, right, about this, my race. And I was like, ooh, I don't like that. But here's the deal. He said a bunch of other stuff that was hilarious to me, you know. And he covered multiple races. It wasn't just like he stayed with one. And it's it's okay. It's okay to poke fun at your own race. It's okay to poke fun at what makes you uncomfortable. If it makes you uncomfortable, then don't be that way, right? Don't be the way that that stereotype was. <laughs> don't, don't be the example of it. So when you're with a narcissist, you are never ever allowed to say something off color. You're never allowed to say anything that might upset them. And yet anything could upset them. You don't know what's going to upset them. Even if you stay away from any racial slurs, political stuff, religious stuff, you know, all the usual, even, and you're like, okay, I'll just talk about the weather. I'll just talk about the weather, you know, and that will offend them. It's absolutely insane. Like if you tell them, oh my gosh, this is such a hot day. And then they'll, they'll have to argue with you because you know how narcissists love to argue. If you were still with the narcissist, you would be arguing most of your life away, <laughs> you know, you forget this. You would be arguing about the dumbest things always. If you were telling them, oh my gosh, it's so hot today, they're going to argue with you. Well, it's not as hot as it was last week you, and you didn't complain last week. Why are you complaining now? You know, oh my gosh. They're like, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating that it's hot. And oh my gosh, you can never be right. You can never be right. It's the narcissist has an opinion against everything you say. And for whatever reason, they have to be right and you have to be wrong. For some reason, they can't agree with you. They can't just say, oh yeah, today is hot. You know, nope, that's, that's just too easy, right? They would, it would be too easy of a life with a narcissist, you guys. So that's another thing you would be dealing with if you were still with the narcissist. Now, you're probably, if you're missing the narcissist, and like I was saying to you guys earlier on before a bunch of you hopped on, um, I was having a conversation back and forth uh, through comments with, with a viewer who is missing the narcissist in his life right now because he's freshly out of the relationship. He's, he's pining for the passion and the excitement and the depth of emotion that was in their relationship. That's what he's pining for. So we're thinking, we're not, we're not focused on the arguing. We're not focused on the times they, they were degrading us. We're focused on the times when it was passionate and it was the best passion you've ever had or the most fun you've ever had on a day. You know, you, you may have had this really great time with them, but then you forgot. You forgot the trauma. You forgot the continual chipping away at your self-esteem. And that's what they do. So I touched on number five, which is they drain you. They drain your self-esteem. If you even have some left, right, you'll have very low self-esteem when you're around the narcissist because you just can't do anything right. You forgot what it's like to wake up and you think it's so pleasant and they were smiling and you were kissing and that was wonderful waking up to that. But then remember about two minutes later when you're brushing your teeth and they're, they're criticizing how you brush your teeth, right? <laughs> they're criticizing what you're choosing to wear. They're criticizing your hairstyle. They're criticizing your beard. They're criticizing um, just how you smell, right? <laughs> they don't like your new cologne. They don't like, you know, it's just go, you forgot that part. You may have woken up and for the first two minutes, it was really pleasant and really sweet. 
but then you go on two minutes later suddenly you're worthless to them suddenly everything you do is wrong and irritates them and you're like what the heck you know so you just try to stay quiet and scoot away from them you forgot that part so imagine if you were still with a narcissist every morning would look the same and actually it gets worse with time you guys it does not get better that's what I'm realizing with a narcissist I want to say actually let me backtrack a little bit there is one way it kind of gets better and that's if you learn boundaries with them that is the only way it sort of starts to get better in that you can control the amount of time that they go crazy on you you don't have to go for a full day of them yelling at you and complaining about everything you do when you stand up to them and you're like no I'm not gonna take that I don't deserve that and you tell them so now that might upset them at that moment and they may go ballistic on you but here's the deal you have to keep standing up to them it's like a child throwing a tantrum if you give in to a child throwing a tantrum what does the child learn to always throw a tantrum or at least um, accelerate it and get it to that point if you if you're not responding the way they want they will get you to the point where you will tip over and respond to them in the way that they want that is but if you respond to them immediately with the way they don't want which is to say you tell them no and you refuse to give them what they want you refuse to agree to do what they want they'll back off and then they'll learn a little bit at a time to back off from you now does it actually totally change them now if they're just a jerk or an immature person or someone who just needs to learn how to respect other people's boundaries they will learn through time they will learn and they will get better but a narcissist I'm not too sure a narcissist will up their game so the best way to have boundaries with a narcissist is not to live with them not to have to interact with them continually you have to be able to limit your time with them so me backtracking and saying that it never gets better with a narcissist it could but you have to not be able to live with them <laughs> you have to be able to have your own space so I know some people who have that with, and I have that too, with narcissists in my life. I have my own space. I get to limit the amount of time I interact with them. And that is the only way that you can have a better relationship with a narcissist. Is it ideal? No. Is it wonderful? Do I look forward to my time with them? No, I don't. But I can handle that time with them, right? I can make sure that in that time we're not going to go into this crazy psycho ranting raving argument we can have a pleasant conversation and when they start to get um, agitated or riled up I know how to calm it down by giving them boundaries and letting and kind of reflecting to them hey or I, I don't want to say like project or reflect really but sort of like letting them know what they sound like letting them hear by my response to them because a lot of times you know what we do we ignore or we we pretend they're not doing what they're doing and they have no idea remember what, when I started off I told you how you cannot control when a narcissist has an outburst and they don't even recognize what they look like when they have an outburst so you can't really stop them from having an outburst but you can react to it and if we react to it like, oh, we don't hear you, we don't see you, just like the waiter and waitresses at the restaurant or um, people at the library who pretend and they don't want to they don't want to come up and say, uh, could you quiet down a little bit? If nobody says anything, then the narcissist thinks everybody agrees with them. The narcissist doesn't realize they're doing anything wrong. So that's why you want to say something when the narcissist starts using a tone with you when they start demeaning you or calling you a name you're like whoa and you stop it you nip it in the bud just the way you would with a child throwing a tantrum you nip it in the bud and if they don't stop you walk away you walk away right um, you ignore it they in the so there are times when they know they're out of control and they're acting up and they know you hear them and then you try to ignore it with a full-grown adult narcissist you can't that's where it's different it differs with a child a child you can ignore and then they calm down 
With a narcissist, it will escalate until it's physical. So you can't exactly ignore that. You have to extract yourself. So if you were still with a narcissist, you would still be dealing with that. You would still be dealing with crazy, psychotic fights that get physical. So you don't want you don't want that in your life. And, and if you remember that, hopefully it'll keep you from missing the narcissist. Well, you guys, um, let me see if there are... Oh, what's going on here? Oh, I must have missed something. <laughs> yes. Yeah. John says, when I told people what she did, everyone says the same thing. Boy, you dodged a bullet for sure. Right? And John, I know your story. You did. You absolutely dodged a bullet. If you were still with her, here's another, here's another number six here, I guess. I'm not really counting the numbers, but I think we're on number six now. You would be dealing with their constant cheating. You would. You know, um, they're always missing what they don't have. So even if you were still with the narcissist and you thought you worked through all the hard things and you survived years and years, maybe even a couple of decades, right, with the narcissist and you think, finally, we're at a place where I can trust this person. No, no, you can't. You cannot trust a narcissist because if they have an opportunity, if they get the chance to have a fling or get reconnected with an ex, they're going to do it. If their ex calls them up, they're going to pretend like they're not interested in front of you, right? But behind your back, they will be texting that ex. They will be meeting up with that ex for coffee dates and then possibly beyond, right? You're not going to be able to shake them loose of cheating on you. You just, you cannot teach a narcissist not to cheat on you. It is always an option for them. They're not loyal people. Narcissists are simply not loyal. They like to think that they're loyal and they demand loyalty from others, but they themselves are not loyal. They will make promises to you. And I mean, you know, I often have said that a relationship with a narcissist is like a business agreement except they don't have to hold on to their their side of it. <laughs> like what kind of business agreement is that, right? It's it's a lose really it's a win lose, I don't know, where they win all the time and you lose, right? They always have to be ahead of you. Whatever the agreement is, they have to come out ahead. So if you think that you lasted 20 years and five um so five what what do you want to call that? times that they cheated on you, right? Five affairs. Um, and you think it's all done and it's all over and they're getting older and they're, they're getting too tired, right? They're, they're not able to do this, keep this up anymore, two or three different people that they're um, sleeping with. We're, you're wrong. You're wrong. They may not be able to sleep with them, but they'll still cheat on you, right? They'll still give affection somewhere else if it is available. If they have access, they will do it. John, I know that you've you've seen that, you've witnessed it. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Are you able are you guys able to comment? Suddenly it seems like my comments oh let me see if I did something wrong here. Hopefully that works. So you're not going to have self esteem. You're going to feel like you're being gaslit all the time. You're going to be on this emotional roller coaster. You're going to have, I think I already said no self-esteem, but it also leads to depression. Depression, you guys. Um, because you can only go for so long. And another one that I didn't repeat right now, I'll, I'll tell you right now, you're gonna go through, um, you're gonna feel like you're shell-shocked, right? But you're also going to feel depressed at times with the narcissist because the loneliest place to be is in a relationship with a narcissist. And the reason for that is because you're not able to have relationship with others. The relationship with the narcissist takes up all of your time. 
so that you cannot have relationship with others. Hold on, you guys. I'm sorry. I just want to see what's going on with... Okay. You cannot have real, deep, authentic relationships with others because the narcissist will be so demanding that they cut into your ability to have relationship with others. You're going to start to feel depressed because you're being cut off of having connection with others. You're going to feel so emotionally alone because the narcissist is not connecting to you. You know, you, you think back to the times when things were great, like the highest point you had with the narcissist and you want to relive that. But the reality is, as your relationship was ending, you were probably depressed or in this pit where you were crying every day or at least feeling like you were on the verge of crying every day. So hopeless, so dark. And you thought it was other things in your life that was causing that hopelessness, maybe, you know, a dead end job or other things going on in your life that was negative, maybe a death in the family or a pet that passed away or um, losing a lot of money on a deal that went bad. And you're thinking that's what was causing your depression. But honestly, the thing that keeps you in the depression is that you are so alone when you were going through that because the narcissist is a horrible partner. They're not there to support you or encourage you or give you any hope. They're only there to continually put you down and make you feel worse about what you're going through and blame yourself even more for what you're going through. So how in the world do you lift yourself out of that pit, right? The narcissist keeps you in a pit. That's where you would be if you were still with the narcissist. Now, some of you guys might have come off of a relationship with the narcissist where you hadn't gone down that far yet, right? You didn't get to that point where you were devastated yet. And the devastation came afterwards. But there were times that you were being gaslit. There were times that they were being derogatory with you and putting you down, chipping away at your self-esteem. There were times when you were sleepless and because they were fighting with you all night long and then the next day you had to be at work, right? And it, it affected your work performance. It affected how you were with your coworkers. It affected your other relationships. And you just don't remember those times because there were, there were so many other things that happened in your relationship that was traumatizing. But when you come out of, out of this relationship with the narcissist, for some reason, we think of only the positive because the pain is so big. The, the hole that they leave behind is so big because they're big personalities, by the way. Even the quiet narcissist, the, the um, oh, I'm, I'm kind of losing my, tra my vocabulary right now. But even the, the covert, that's what I'm trying to remember, covert and overt narcissist, right? Even the covert narcissist, are big personalities, so big that you're gonna miss it, them when they're gone. You're going to miss that void because they fill up the house, they fill up the room, they fill up your mind and your heart, and when they're gone, you think that you, you've lost a limb. It feels like someone just cut off your arm. And what we forget is that we had gangrene in that arm, you know, that arm would, you know, that, that in infection would have spread through the rest of our body and killed us. But instead you're just missing a part that's, yeah, it's painful when you tear it out, when you clean it out, when you surgically remove it without any anesthesia, by the way, right? When you remove it, it is so painful and yet it saves your life. It saves you. It saves your life but it saves the rest of your life so that now you get to have a, an amazing, beautiful, incredible, fulfilling life. You just don't realize it yet, but you're getting there. Day by day, you're going to get there. And I, this is why I wanna keep doing this show. I wanna keep showing you what you're missing. You're missing a total nightmare, you guys. You're missing 
total disaster. Uh, yeah, something must have happened. Yeah. The barking dog says you cannot even know yourself or ever have real intimacy, love, kindness, or empathy. Exactly. BB Scott, good to see you. Says, thank you, Escape. Yes, they have no support and hope when devastating things are all around. And in fact, they seem, seem oblivious. Yes. Jihad, good to see you. Yeah, you know, they are oblivious to the devastation and the, and the tragedies that are happening around them. Um, they're, they live inside of their head. They just don't join into reality. And the moments that they join into reality, it's only to cause more devastation. And you don't even really want them there. You, you want to be away from that. Um, one of the things you probably miss is the fantasy world, right? There is a fun and exciting fantasy world that they build inside of their head. And some of us, actually I think most of us, right, if not all of us, have been there. And that's what pulls us back to them. We think that this fantasy world that they, they um, created for us for, in our relationship was the real thing. But that was the fake thing. That was them acting. That was not the real thing. We are missing a movie. We're missing a short movie that they play every now and again when they want to. It doesn't exist in reality. So, you guys, we're coming up on our hour. And I think I have my... Oh, yes. You're going to go through... And it kind of follows with what I was saying about you're going to continually be cheated on, right? The, the cheating just doesn't stop. You think it might stop with age, like they'll get tired, right? But it doesn't stop. You're going to go through, and this is what will keep you also on that emotional roller coaster. Because you're going to be paranoid about who they're talking to, who they're with, what they're doing, even though you might think, oh no, they're they're better, they're better now. They they haven't been flirting as much, but you'll still catch them flirting. You'll still catch them um, trying to get attention, right, from other people, and you're gonna wonder, are they hoping it'll lead to something? Are they trying to start something with this other person? Are they even pursuing this person when they're not around you? How will you know? You, you don't, you won't know. You're going to be paranoid and jealous. That is no way to live with a partner. You should never have to feel jealous or paranoid when you're in a loving relationship. You should be able to feel complete trust. You should be able to feel complete peace when you're apart from each other and when you're together. When my husband is not around me, I'm not thinking, oh my gosh, he's off drinking somewhere, right? Or he's off, he's off philandering somewhere. Uh, oh my gosh, who is he talking to? What, what people are he, is he meeting at, at work, right? What people is he um, getting close to? Are, are, are they attracted to him? What's going on? How are they with him? Are they flirting with him? I, I don't have to think about that. But with a narcissist, you see them doing it right in front of your eyes. So if you can see them doing that right in front of your eyes, what in the world are they doing when they're not in front of you, right? What in the world are they doing? If you were still with the narcissist, if you had stayed, you would still be living in that paranoid world. That's what it would look like. Oh, another thing that um, I did touch on, though, is that you do get very little rest when you're with the narcissist. Now, do you remember with the narcissist, I'm trying to remember, you know, I do have covert and overt narcissists in my life. I've had those both. And the covert narcissist, I would think, I was not intimate with a covert one, but I would think the covert might be less draining in that you might get some sleep with them. But if I recall her talking about her relationships, it seemed like they often would have these fights throughout the night. So maybe you won't, you know, I, I'm not sure that you actually do get rest even with a covert narcissist uh, because they will keep the argument going. They will keep 
digging under your you know nails with with toothpicks you're like what the heck where did that come from um they just keep digging away and away they they'll say little things to just get under your skin right uh, comments and and digs uh, those are the covert narcissists but the overt narcissist they're so excitable they have to keep going 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 you just never get any rest you will always be on the go if you're not on the go physically like in a good way you're also going to be depleted emotionally because of the fighting a continual constant fighting it just doesn't end with a narcissist well you guys that is what your life would look like <laughs> in a nutshell right um, it's not a good place to be the things that we're missing about a narcissist are um, the excitement and the and by the way it's your body's hormones it, it is it's when you stop and think about the last time someone excited you right um, for me it was my husband if I stop and think about the last time it was so exciting with my husband uh, physically emotionally I'll remember the hormonal connection I had with him the the oxytocin that was created between him and me it's so intoxicating it's so exciting that, that even when I'm not with him and I'm thinking about him that oxytocin will continue to be produced inside of me and I'll desire him and I'll still want him even when he is not anywhere near me and I know I won't get to see him for eight or eight or ten hours from now I'll I'll it's 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 like this cloud that overtakes you this fantasy cloud that's so warm and fuzzy and, and comforting and exciting and passionate that's what you're missing you're missing producing that hormone with somebody. Now you don't want to produce that with a narcissist because that is where you're going to start desiring and missing somebody who's actually toxic for you. You want to produce that hormone only with somebody who is safe and good and loving towards you. So now that you're away from the toxic crazy you can actually get yourself to the point where you can find somebody who will be a great match for you who's not going to be psycho who's not going to be up and down but first you have to get your yourself to that point and that's why i talk about that as well you guys i know i'm saying a lot of things today but i do often talk about working on yourself now the 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 world today or the society today wants to say you're perfect the way you are and i think it's being said less and less now because everybody realizes how stupid that is um if you don't like me at my worst then you don't deserve me at my best have you heard that right um no we don't want you at your worst you know if you are at your worst as much as the narcissist is <laughs> there is a problem there is a problem right you don't want to be that way and i'm certain that you don't want to bring that into a relationship why would you want to bring your worst into a relationship now there are times that you might not be at your peak right there are times that you might flounder or feel depressed or um, use a tone you know an irritated tone with somebody and you didn't mean it you're going to fix that you're going to fix that and you're going to fix it quickly and you're going to be able to move on quickly from there and not turn it into this big giant devastating fight with the person you're going to be able to apologize you're going to be able to humble yourself you're going to be able to say oh my gosh I'm so sorry that it wasn't you I'm just irritated today about other things and I apologize and you can fix that you want to fix you before you go into another relationship now the narcissist does do a lot of damage to us when they leave but they also expose a lot of the things we need to fix and in a way that's really good that's really good because now we can fix it before we go into 
the long haul relationship, the lifelong relationship we were meant to have. So you guys, there is so much hope out there. Work on yourself, find what makes you happy, see if there's, um, you know, what, what does pique your passion and your interest, right? Go for that. You have the whole world in front of you. Now, do we have certain things that are blocking us? Yes, but here's the deal, it doesn't matter. If you're a resilient person, that's, that's another thing actually, grow to become a resilient person. The more resilient you are, the more successful, the more happy, the more um, loving, the more giving you're going to be. The more resilient a person you are, the better your life is going to be. So strive for that. Strive for resiliency, not just endurance, okay? Yes, endurance is great. And if you're still alive, you endured, right? You absolutely endured. You're going to be able to, to get through. But you don't want to just get through something. You want to succeed. You want to resi be resilient to the point where you're going to bounce back, right? You're going to bounce back into good things in your life. You're not going to just get through the bad and just barely make it through and just barely be breathing at the end of the day, right? You don't want that. You want to be bouncing back faster each day and each moment. And you can do that. Oh my gosh. Life is so good when you're able to do that, you guys. You know, at the beginning, um, when I got on, OB, it was you. <laughs> you and I were talking about how hard things were and, um, you know, just trying to survive, right? Absolutely. There are going to be moments and days when you're just feeling like, I just need to get through today, right? I just need to do the minimum and get moving and get myself a cup of coffee and uh, get to work, do what I need to do, get home and get back into bed, right? You're, you're just thinking, if I can just do that, um, yeah, there are going to be days where endurance is going to get you through. But then you're going to really benefit from being resilient. You're going to really benefit from be, being able to change course quickly. So you guys, we're going to talk possibly more about that next time. And I would love to hear your suggestions about how to be resilient. Um, but before I leave you, as we're coming up to the end of the hour, I'm going to let you have a few minutes to tie up a few conversations. But I want to give you a few tips before we leave. One way to become resilient is humility. Yeah, believe it or not, humility. Um, accept where you're wrong. You know, just say, oh my gosh, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. And then forgive yourself. Humility and forgiveness. It's not just for other people, it's for you as well. Remember that. Notice, you know, be humble enough to, even if you're embarrassed, okay? Even if you're too embarrassed to, to apologize or to say something to somebody else, at least be real with yourself. It starts there, right? It starts there. Be real with yourself. I wish that the narcissists in my life could do that. I wish they could because I look at their life and I just cringe. I cringe because I know they never stop to think about humility. They never apologize for the jerk that they've been. They just don't. And they carry that. They carry it around. Uh, it becomes a huge burden to them, whether they know it or not. Because when you're not able to see your faults, when you're not able to... Um, to admit when you're wrong. How are you going to correct it, right? How can you possibly correct course when you don't know you're on the wrong course? That's a narcissist. They will stay on the wrong course adamantly because they will not admit that they're wrong or that they should change or that they should have done anything differently. But if you do, if you look back and you say, oh my gosh, I should not have done that. I should have taken the relationship slower. I shouldn't have jumped into bed right away. I shouldn't have 
um, you know, lost my, my cool or, you know, flipped out over small things, even though I, my emotions were raw, you don't let yourself get to that point. You're like, you know, what I needed to do was get more sleep. I should have stopped the argument. I shouldn't have argued all night with them. I should have backed away or gone to another place and gone to sleep. You guys just saw that, right? A, a bird just flew <laughs> into the... Anyway, you guys, if you're able to be humble with yourself, have some humility, admit where you were wrong. It may even drive you, to, you know, motivate you to admit it to somebody else, the, the person you wronged. And oh my gosh, you guys, it is so healing once you do that. If you can do that, it is so healing. But the more you cling to your self-righteousness, the less you're going to be resilient, the less resilient you're going to be. Think about, you know, um, plastic, if it's bendable, right? Or even a tree branch that's, that's alive and has veins and, and water and moisture and nutrients going through that branch. It's going to be flexible and it can bend with the wind and it won't snap off. But the branch that's drying out inside that is cut off its own circulation and becomes hardened, when a wind comes by, it's going to snap the branch. So you don't want to be like that. You want to be bendable. You want to be able to say, oh my gosh, I was wrong, and give the life nourish, nurturing humility to flow through you. You guys, that is what I'm going to part with you today. Be humble, but don't be so sh ashamed. Like, don't carry, you know, a lot of times people think that humility carries shame. No, it doesn't. Humility is not about shame. Now, you might be embarrassed that you made a mistake or that you said something or that you did something, but then forgive yourself, right? You're just human like anybody else. We all make mistakes. Well, you guys, I hope that today has helped you. I hope that you got some good tips on what you can do when you think back about things you need to fix. Uh, be real with yourself, but also be loving with yourself. Forgive yourself and move forward. Be bendable. You guys, I am so grateful for you. Thank you so much for coming on. Blessings to you. I think that you guys are awesome and you're going to make it. Thank you so much for sharing your stories and especially in the comments afterwards. I've gotten some really great comments in the past and on other videos and I think in the recent video as well. But um, the more you comment, the more conversation we have, the more we grow together. So blessings to you. I pray that you have a great week and I will see you next week. Oh, and I am still going to try to do a Tuesday night. So look out for that. I'm getting closer to wanting to do that. We will see. I will talk to you next week. Have a great week.